like I said, good afternoon. Um, we're just going to take you through some slides today and tell you um, about this new um, approach that's been developed in Forth Valley and West Lothian. Um, just going to do some introductions before we begin, though. Um, if we could move on to the next slide, Julie. So my name is Jamie Dungavel. I am an uh, education officer for community learning and development within the region of Forth Valley and West Lothian. Um, I'm joined today by my colleague Julie. Julie, you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, Julie Beckett, a CLD Development Officer with Education Scotland as well. We're also joined today by Jackie Halawi, who is the Senior Regional Advisor for Forth Valley and West Lothian. Um, Jackie, if you want to introduce yourself and say hello. Thank you very much, uh, Jamie. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to welcome you all to the launch of the Youth Voice Charter and to emphasise that this is a really important piece of work in collaboration with children and young people. I think it's testament to the Fourth Valley and West Lothian Rick's commitment to work in partnership with all key stakeholders and to importantly seek the views of children and young people. And I hope that throughout this afternoon's launch that you'll be able to see how the Charter is setting it, the high standards of engagement that we would look to from practitioners across the region. Um, I'd also um, be delighted that by attending this launch that you'll also further endorse the Charter in your own local areas and, and in your own practice. So I'm not going to take up too much of uh, the rest of this because we have a short time and I'm going to pass over um, so that the launch can be um, undertaken in, in its full capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And finally, I just want to introduce uh, Ian McGee, who is the Rec Development Officer. Um, Ian, if you want to say hello and introduce yourself. Hi, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I'm Ian McGee, so I'm, as Jamie said, I'm the Development Officer. Um, when I was appointed to my current role as Development Officer, one of the first tasks the directors asked me to carry out was to look at the governance of our RIC and to make it more inclusive. Right from the outset, it was glaringly obvious that our largest stakeholder group, i.e. our children and young people, their voice was missing. And it's not an easy task to get a representative and coherent view of 64,000 children and young people across our RIC. Um, the team working on this initiative, however, have achieved that and all credit to them for doing so. And what we've got with this set of guiding principles is uh, guiding principles we can apply to all plans, interventions at, uh, across our RIC, whether they be at school, classroom, um, cluster, local authority or RIC level. Um, the directors and senior officers, their commitment to this has, uh, is both significantly significant and timely. UNCRC is likely to become enshrined in Scots law in the very near future. This will change this initiative from a moral imperative to a legal necessity. And in some cases, that's going to mean a change of emphasis is going to be required. But if we want our children and young people to become truly engaged partners in the learning process, we need to work collaboratively with them, giving them ownership in that process. And over the next couple of months, our seconded officers will be working with four schools and a test of change around learning, teaching and assessment. And an integral part of this process will be how in practical terms the establishments we're working with will have engaged with and empowered children and young people. So well done to the team in terms of producing this. They're going to share this with you, but it's a very impressive piece of work. So well done. Thank you, Ian. So um, just to begin, uh, I'm just going to pass to Julie, who's going to take you on to our first section here, just to link the overarching element of how this what does link to UNCRC. Julie? Thanks so much, Jamie and Jackie and Ian, and a great segue, um, unplanned segue, I might add there, from Ian into just kicking us off with a wee bit around Article 12 of the UNCRC. So when we talk about youth voice, we're meaning when children and young people are involved in discourse and decisions that affect them. Youth Voice involves gathering their views in a representative way and taking action as a result of those views being heard. Youth Voice processes should be reflective of the wide range of experiences, circumstances, characteristics and perspectives of all children and young people 
And when we think about youth voice and this piece of work more specifically, it's really important to recognise that young people have a right to express their views, feelings and wishes on all matters affecting them and to have those views considered and taken seriously by those around them. So as Ian mentioned there, the UNCRC and Corporation Bill requires Scotland's public authorities to protect children's rights in their decision making. And UNCRC and Corporation will mean that children's rights will be legally protected in Scotland. It will mean that public authorities must take steps to respect children's rights in their decisions and their actions. And it will mean that children and young people and their representatives will be able to use courts in Scotland to enforce their rights if they aren't heard and recognised. So the bill was passed unanimously in uh, 2021, but certain provisions within it were later ruled out with the Scottish Parliament's kind of legislative competence, and that was through the Supreme Court. So the proposed changes will mean that public authorities will be required to act compatibly with the UNCRC requirements when they're delivering devolved functions um, conferred by or under acts of the Scottish Parliament. And we'll be hoping to see that put into legislation really, really soon. So one way of supporting children and young people's voices to be heard and to realise Article 12 of the UNCRC is to explore the Lundy model and consider what this could look like for us in the Forth Valley and West Lothian region. The Lundy model is based on the child's rights model of participation and was developed by Professor Laura Lundy at Queen's University in Belfast. It provides guidance for decision makers on the steps to take in giving children and young people people a meaningful voice in decision making and the model suggests that the implementation of article 12 of the UNCRC requires consideration of four interrelated elements of space voice audience and influence so thinking about these four elements we feel that the regional approach that we're launching today is a way for us to really put the kind of policy and the guidance into action across our regional area Last year, together in their annual report, the State of Children's Rights, they said that a recurring challenge is a gap between theory and practice for many decision makers, adults and organisations. They said that multiple participants identified a lack of a feedback loop, both internally and externally, meaning that children did not know the impact of their engagement and could not hold decision makers to account. And we really want to change this. We really want young people to feel heard and recognised and to know what happens as a result of their voice being recognised by the adults around them. So I'm going to hand back to Jamie now to tell us a bit more about the youth voice journey that we've been on in our area. Thanks, Julie. At this point, we want to take you through the youth voice journey within Forth Valley and West Lothian. For over a year, great lengths have been taken to ensure that a sustainable, consistent and meaningful approach within our region was created. However, doing this wasn't easy and involved the support of a great number of practitioners. With the RIC strategic plan having a focus for ensuring that the voices of children and young people were included within its direction and decisions, it provided the initial catalyst in developing an approach that worked. Community learning development were highlighted as a service that would be able to create this approach and thus the journey began. Initially, a youth voice development group was created involving interested practitioners from across all four local authorities, from CLD, education, local authority and third sector. This group spent a great time considering a number of different approaches and avenues and what would work on a regional level for youth voice and also what would be realistic. Can I just say at this point a huge thank you to Lisa Steele, Fiona Moffat, Fern Milne, Tracy Deegan, Gary Machinstry from Stirling Council, Suzanne Stowe, Suzanne, um, Sarah Stowe, Suzanne Brown from Falkirk Council and Quarriers and Jane Alexander from West Lothian Council for being part of this group at its infancy and Helen helping create the elements we are be sharing with you today. The journey involved more than just this group, however, practitioners from all the authorities helped shape this youth voice approach with their knowledge, expertise and involvement. Many of the colleagues in this room provided support in creating opportunities for children and young people to share their views and concerns when it came to youth voice approach. They also shared insights and what would be the needs, um, including what past re research and guidance said and what methodologies worked well and what needed to be embedded into guidance. Our thanks go out to these colleagues who made this process robust and inclusive. Our youth voice journey has also involved officers from our RIC throughout its creation and fundamentally it has been endorsed by strategic leaders and the directors from all four local authorities. All these parts have brought us to this point today where we are pleased to launch the youth voice approach with Fourth Valley and with Lothian 
and its three component, component, component parts. Our approach, our approach consists of these three parts. A guidance framework for practitioners and leaders, the regional youth voice charter developed by children and young people, and the empowering youth voice research, which can be used by practitioners working with children and young people. We're going to go through each of these parts today, <coughs> explaining how they were created and the main purpose of them. All three parts can be easily accessed by colleagues across the region, and we will show you where they can be found towards the end of the presentation today. Firstly, the guidance framework. This framework is a document to ensure children and young people's voices are meaningfully included across the region and within local authorities. So why is this so important? Well, it's to ensure a consistent and genuine approach to youth voice practices, which should be embedded across all settings. It is important that somewhere refers to the approaches that are discussed here today and how they are meant to be implemented. This document is that source. Who is it for? Practitioners and leaders with an interest in or role in youth voice. Any colleagues at any level can lift this document and refer to it if they wish to inform their own practice and understand better the regional approach that has been created within Forth Valley and West Lothian. And the next steps for this framework is to be shared with relevant colleagues and used as a reference point for embedding youth participation and youth voice planning in all settings. The contents of the document cover a wide variety of elements. Some of the key ones are going to share with you today. The bullet points you can see here are the main headings of the document, but overall it provides a framework for supporting children and young people's voice being meaningfully included across all settings. In this its vision, it highlights the outcomes that should be strived for when a youth voice approach is taken and how youth voice covers a wide range of themes that are local, regional and national. It also highlights why youth voice is important and shows the impact where it's been made previously. It has strong recommendations on how youth voice outcomes should be inclusive and non-tokenistic. We also reference here that youth voice covers terms that are widely used um, when referring to the voice of children of young people, including pupil voice and learner voice, etc. In models, we highlight the, high, the structures that are known within Fourth Valley and West Lothian. At this point, I would like to highlight this framework as a living document that will be updated and changed as things develop and evolve within the region. Models such as pupil councils, youth forums, pupil parliaments, champion groups, ambassador groups, these are all discussed here and how they sit within the authorities and connect. In the section that looks at supporting youth voice sections, we see how the different practitioners should support children and young people they work with and how this links to other youth voice structures. Crucially, it also details how youth, children and young people should be involved in sharing their views at different levels and the considerations that need to be made. This is further enhanced by highlighting the processes for capturing children and young people's voice and how it can be impactful, impactful and relevant. There are specific references to Youth Voice Charter in this document, the Empowering Youth Voice Approach, UNCRC, the Lundy Model and Hearts Ladder of Participation. The section that talks about the action as a result of Youth Voice, details how action has to be taking place as a result of consulting and collaborating with children and young people and how this should be shared. It asks key questions. Where is the information being shared? How is it being contextualised? Does it make sense? Also, what is the impact it's made and what approaches are used to share this information in engaging and accessible means? And finally, the policy landscape element looks at the research and policy that currently exists, showing what pieces of work have been conducted nationally across different organisations and what they found. This document draws from this research, making recommendations based on the findings, but also highlighting important information around youth and participation. One of the key elements we want to share was how the regional approach works along current structures. Youth voice should always be representative and look to include the views of children and young people beyond the structures that currently exist. An acknowledgement to this framework, the, 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 this, the, the framework recommends that different structures link to one another with children and young people being able to be part of different levels. It also acknowledges the staff who support these structures and how they are integral to the integrity of the consistent and meaningful youth voice approaches within the region. In this model, all staff with a role in youth voice become part of a local authority youth voice network. This is supported by the local authority links within the youth voice development group and, as detailed in the document, provides continuity in learning, resource, guidance, support and knowledge. This group has a duty to ensure that group, the children and young people have their opinions heard and acted upon, they empower the key staff that work with children and young people so they can participate fully in decisions that affect their life. They also have the responsibility for cascading knowledge, information, training to the youth voice networks, which also, while also moderating the consistency of the youth voice approach being used to guarantee it's inclusive and meaningful and non-tokenistic. 
The network ultimately creates a central platform where the views of children and young people can be shared when it comes to local and regional and national themes, ensuring these views do not simply reside within their respective establishments. Although the document details a range of different guidance and recommendations, we wanted to highlight some of the key actions within the document today. One of which is each local authority and individual establishments embedding the, youth, the regional youth voice charter that's been developed with the views of children and young people within the region. That means across all the settings, all aspects of authority and education, we're looking for the charter to be embedded within those kind of settings. It also looks to act on the idea of practitioners who support youth voice structures being members of their local authority, authority youth voice network. It looks to make sure that representation from all local authorities exists within the youth the Youth Voice Development Group, and that includes from different sectors, such as CLD, education and the third sector, and also recommends stringent adoption of recommended approaches to consult children and young people, specifically um, one of the ones that's mentioned in this, uh, this approach today, which is the Empowering Youth Voice approach. There are other actions within the document, however, these are central to the success of the approach um, alongside the other information within it. Our second part of this approach today is the Youth Voice Charter, which is the guiding principles of how children and young people wish to be engaged and consulted on when their views and opinions are sought. Why is it important? It's to recognise the collective views of children and young people, honouring their views and their opinions. Um, it's for any practitioner or leader that organises, plans or delivers Youth Voice activity. And what we would like in thinking about moving forward is how this Youth Voice Charter can continue to build endorsements and ad adoption um, across the system and making sure that it's utilised um, in a lot of different settings. It should be utilising the charter and agreement based on the children and young people that, that, whose views have been sought to create it and allow for their views um, to be central um, when developing work that involves them. So here is the charter and its 10 guiding principles. Again, this charter was created by the children and young people of Clackmannish for Falkirk, Stirling and West Lothian. It's, it was shaped by the representatives um, from youth voice structures and informed by the views of over 650 individuals across the four local authority. The statements are the principles and how children and young people wish to be engaged with, how they want to be consulted on and how they want to be their views to be considered and opinions heard. It comes in this format, but again, there's other formats and we'll again show how that they're accessible later on. Um, some are two documents, some are um, a signable version, printable versions, etc. So um, the content's always the same, but it's displayed in different ways. Just wanted to highlight a couple of these 10 principle statements, just for again, the power that comes beside, behind the words. Um, the first one there, treat us with fairness. Uh, respect and fairness, speak to us calmly and don't shout, politely and patiently, nicely and kindly, remain balanced, calm, taking into account our feelings and frustrations. Another one that shows the, kind of, the, the weight of the words of the, the children and young people that were in, 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 consulted to create this, um, was give us time to think and share, we need time to understand and work at our own pace, give us different ways to share our opinions and the chance to do so, found out what works for us, sharing views individually or with others privately or publicly don't overwhelm us but don't limit us the information you give us either plan to seek speak to us and don't leave things to the last minute and finally a one that i think has a lot of power and a lot of weight in regards to how we think about how we work with children and young people we are collaborators not consultants work with us as partners in a genuine and equal way see all our opinions at the same as the same and don't let yours as the adult be the dominant one. Allow us to make decisions and be involved in the actions taken. These views, all 10 of them, are the views of children and young people across the region. They have been shaped into statements by children and young people across the region. And finally, they have been approved and agreed by children and young people across the region. Considerable steps were, to make, to make, were taken to make sure this charter was representative and meaningful, involved children and young people um, from a range of different life circumstances across the four local authorities. Views from, were captured using a, a vast array of consult, consultation processes, including group discussions, feedback, feedback forms, in-person events, individual feedback, etc. Staff involved only act as facilitators, and as such, they are the principles on how children and young people wish to be engaged with when it comes to their views and opinions. And the views and the children and young people involved in this charter were not just those within schools, they were those out with schools as well. Move on to our last part of the youth voice approach. I'm going to pass back to Julie. Julie. 
Thanks, Jamie. So the third component of our regional approach is a practical toolkit which empowers children and young people to consult their peers on issues that affect them. It's for practitioners working across settings, school settings, community settings, um, and it's really to support a kind of consistent way of, of capturing youth voice and to allow practitioners a tool to be able to lift and use. It was really important to us as we went through the creation of this. It was something um, usable and we recognise, you know, the stresses of people trying to to fit things into day to day workloads. And we really just wanted to create something that was that was very um, usable and adaptable. So we recognise that to best represent children and young people across the region, those who are currently involved in youth work, youth voice structures should also act as advocates for their peers to really allow a broader range of voices to be heard. So this approach has been adapted and built upon from the original Stirling Social Justice Ambassadors programme, which we found to be a tried and tested model that's been used in secondary, primary and CLD settings. And this approach really allows a greater collective voice to be captured and heard when it comes to the views of all children and young people on a particular local, regional or national issue. So we'll come on to sharing the, the link to where these resources are, are stored in a minute and the toolkit will download as a PowerPoint presentation automatically when you click on the link from the RIC site. And each slide includes practitioner notes and activity descriptions to really make it as accessible and usable as possible. The toolkit utilises a peer research model and supports children and young people to undertake a piece of research with their peers on any given subject. So this could include like a particular area of school learning or attendance, it could be around poverty or mental health. The kind of subject is um, secondary to the to the toolkit because it's really about the skills and the ability to consult and capture youth voice. So it's very adaptable and practitioners can use it as they see fit to meet their group's needs. There might be slides that people do want to use, there might be slides people don't, there might be things people wish to add in as they go. That's totally fine, it's been built in that way. And utilising the toolkit will support children and young people to develop a range of skills, including research, consultation, analysing data, things around context and community, planning and social awareness. And incorporating these skills within the youth voice structures, it guarantees that children and young people who consult their peers are fully equipped to do so. And views that are gathered will then demonstrate a high degree of accuracy based on the topic. And that's because the questions being asked will be from a youth friendly perspective because the young people will have written the questions around whatever the topic is. And just to highlight the kind of sections and the contents here, as I said, it's very adaptable. It could be used for any theme that children and young people are being asked to look at or it could be a theme that children and young people choose themselves. There might be things around, you know, access to community spaces or local play parks, leisure centre closures. It could be around PEF school spend and budgets as part of a participatory budgeting process. It really is very adaptable. This toolkit's about the core research skills and it's the practitioner's responsibility to offer the topic specific information. So, for example, if you were using this to consult on a budget decision, it would be the practitioner's responsibility to provide the young people with the specific details and information in a way that is understandable and accessible. This is the kind of core research element to support the practitioners and their group through that process. So you'll see we cover things like understanding youth voice and children's rights. We've got a section on becoming a team because this may be a group that you've worked with for a long time. This may be a class that you've worked with for a long time, or this may be a group that's just coming together to look at a specific youth voice topic. So we felt teamwork was an important thing in there. Then moves on to look at becoming a social researcher, identifying that theme and learning a bit more about the theme and the research tools. And then supporting the young people to undertake their research and analyse the results and make an action plan from that. And again, we talk about at the end how important it is to kind of close that feedback loop and for the adults to are supporting the consultation to take place to really let the young people know what's happened as a result of the um, activities. 
So I'm just going to take you on for a moment to show where these resources are all saved. So these three elements, as we've discussed today, are all in the Fourth Valley and West Lothian blog, which you'll see here. So I'm going to just click on the home page um, for those that have not accessed the blog before. If you're not so familiar, it looks like this. Um, and we scroll right down here to the Youth Voice section here. So when you click on that, you will be met with this page, which just explains a wee bit about the regional approach, obviously, that we're launching today. And then further scrolling down, you have three sections. So you have the guidance framework and you click on that and it'll take you to the download of the guidance framework. The charter we have here um, and just as Jamie was saying, there's a couple of um, versions of that at the moment and we're hoping with feedback from people to keep developing them. Um, I know it was just on Friday there that we talked about an A3 version being able to be um, printable so that if people could have it on their um, classroom walls or youth club walls or, you know, that kind of thing to have it really visible. So we're continually working and developing that. So you may see um, more appear here. There's also a signable edition that has a signed line at the bottom for people if they would like to get their heads of establishments to sign it. Um, again, that's there. And then the third one, the Empowering Youth Voice Resource, the toolkit we were just talking about. When you click on this link, it will automatically download as a PowerPoint, um, as we felt that was the most accessible kind of way to, to do that. So that's a brief run through of where everything's saved. We'll share the link in the chat so you can access that directly. And I'll hand back to Jamie. Thank you, Julie. So this takes us to our final slide um, of today and it's that sort of pledge that we're looking for when it comes to how these three elements are, are, are rolled out. Um, so we would like you to read the guidance framework and share and recommend it to others as emerging practice in youth work voice. This framework is the anchor which supports the youth voice approach within the region. It helps practitioners who are new and those who are experienced understand the way youth voice practice should be conducted within the region and all its different layers and parts. We would like you to share the charter and support it to be upheld in every school and educational setting, council department, third sector organisation and community group within Fourth Valley and West Lothian. The 10 statements within the charter should be the guiding principles of every situation that conducts youth voice and youth participation. We are keen that all settings detailed use it, display it, refer to it and embed it um, from this point forward. We would like you to connect to practitioners or we would like you to connect us to practitioners who would support the implementation of the empowering youth voice resource. Um, the strength of this resource and how it allows children and young people to consult their peers and advocate for them means we hope for a consistent rollout. We're hoping that to link with a range of different practitioners in different settings to begin this process with the support of the Youth Voice Development Group. And finally, we would like you to support the development of the Youth Voice Networks in each local authority, identifying practitioners who should be included. To create or develop strong networks, we need to make sure they are fully representative, helping identify practitioners who deliver pupil councils, pupil parliaments, youth forums, Scottish Youth Parliament, everything that involves youth voice structures is key to including them in these networks and allowing the beginning of this process. As it's already been highlighted, with UNC and CIA are on course to becoming legislation within Scotland, effective ways to demonstrate the voices of children and young people are heard will be essential. We believe that this regional approach will allow this to happen. So we'd like to take a little moment there um, and pause um, and ask colleagues within the, the chat or the, and, and the, the room today if they have any kind of thoughts or any key questions um, that we can answer um, or anything that they've seen today that they want to kind of ask a wee bit more about or want to kind of question at all. Bryony, do you want to come in? Yeah, I just uh, find it silent room really difficult. To... Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any questions, but I think it's a great development. I really do. And, that you know, it's the kind of ultimate um, output from lots of uh, great partnership and collaboration that's been going on. Seems there's a lot of good practice I'm familiar with, but also good practice from elsewhere. 
that's informed it that we will benefit from. So thank you very much for that. Thanks, Bryony. I mean, I think that's the main thing for us that it was developed with collaboration across a multitude of different um, settings and a multitude of different partners to guarantee that it was fully representative. And um, when the Youth Voice Development Group and um, this work was in its infancy, we thought long and hard what was realistic. Um, we were very aware that, um, that when it came to Youth Voice guidance, that there was pieces of information that were across different sort of sources. And again, when it came to the regional representation of what was there, there wasn't something that was specific. So we wanted to bring that together. Um, we wanted to make sure the views of children and young people were centralised in all of this. And a charter was the best way to do it, to make sure that that was something that was fully considered and realised. And finally, that resource, um, we're aware that practitioners that have youth voice on the remit, sometimes they've been doing it for years, sometimes it's the first time they've been doing it. So we wanted something tangible that could be used um, and taken away specifically from that idea of having groups of children and young people that represent their peers, but they don't specifically do it via consultation. We wanted to change that. We wanted to say, well, your role as a youth body that is representing your peers, you need to consult your peers, you need to understand how to consult and understand how to research, understand how to ask questions. Um, we felt that was really important because that way it makes it fully representative and like Julie said, means the accuracy of what's gathered um, is much more correct instead of just the views of few, um, it's the views of many. I suppose if there's no more questions or no more thoughts, um, We'll just move on to the last wee slide then. So, like we said there, um, the next steps are those kind of key actions and myself uh, and Julie and other members of the Youth Voice Development Group will be looking for support um, within that. So we'll be reaching out to different colleagues within the, the group here and today. Um, but the main part for everybody is to sort of read the guidance, to start to encourage that charter use um, and again, implement it in all establishments and all settings. Um, when it comes to rolling out the resource, we want to support that. We want to make sure that it's something that's not just passed over and we want to be involved in its kind of rollout. So again, if, if you're aware of different establishments that would be keen to implement it and try it out, um, again, so we can build up that skill set, um, it would be really quite key for you to link with ourselves. Um, what we would look to do is that if you are aware of um, Again, key contacts that we should be linking with. Um, again, representatives on the Youth Voice Development Group that you think should be included. The idea of uh, um, developing networks, who the kind of key contacts are with that as well. And um, that's the kind of next steps um, that we'll be looking for and our details are there. Um, and again, like Julie highlighted, all the information is on um, the RIC uh, blog site um, and the link is within the presentation, which we will share today as well. Um, but for us, um, just other key questions there. Yes, Shona, happy for us to, to put that up on our web, your website, absolutely 100%. Um, the information is to be shared widely and would encourage you to again, utilise it in all different situations, all different settings. Um, we've got ambitions again of any establishment you walk into it, then there's a youth charter there. Um, that's kind of that guiding document that supports all youth voice within those establishments. So that would be, um, kind of an ambition of how that would look. Um, when it comes to the empowering youth voice resource, the, you know, the skills that we can develop in children and young people as a result of that resource, um, if that was done consistently across the region, imagine all those youth voice structures having those skills, being able to consult all their peers around any topic. I think that's really quite important and really quite impactful. So that's again, another ambition. And that guidance framework, the document there, um, again, to be used, passed about, shared, referred to um, at any given point by any practitioners that feel it would be useful for them. So like I said, um, our details are there. Um, we'll be reaching out to colleagues within this group um, and also be looking for correspondence back for those kind of key elements about trialing out the, the Youth Voice um, resource, the Empowering Youth Voice resource, and also the establishment of the Youth Voice networks or development of them um, because they are integral to really implementing this approach going forward. Um, but 
Um, hopefully this has been useful for everyone that's came here today. If there is any other follow-up questions, myself and Julie will stay on um, for a couple of minutes towards the end, or you can pop us those emails. And again, please um, begin to use this resource because I think it makes a great difference to the voices of the children and young people we all work with and all represent and making sure that their views are fully included with decisions that affect their life.